Let's pray as we get into the Word of God this morning. Father, thank you so much for the Word of God. Your Word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light to our path. We are so grateful, Father. So grateful, so grateful, Father. So grateful to you. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Father, we're so blessed. We are just so blessed. In the name of Jesus, we are so blessed. Amen. I want to talk to you about this morning. We're beginning about living the good life. How many of you heard Josh Buble singing, you know, birds flying high, you know how I feel, you know, that's, I mean, you can get through that whole, that whole thing. I don't care. I don't even care who he is. I try to get it. I try to listen to four people at once. What does that even matter? I don't have a lot of time, so what I do, you, how many of you know that in, on your iPod or in your, you know, uh, actually in your podcasts, how many of you listen to podcasts? You listen to podcasts? Okay. In your podcast, you can see that it's got that plus 15, minus 15. Do you know what that is? What that is is that it actually speeds it up so you can listen faster if you want. So I always listen to it as fast as I possibly can because I don't necessarily have the, uh, the amount of time to do what I need to do. And so um, I, do kind of, I do kind of that. But now, what was his name again? Where's he from? How did you know that, Tracy? I did in politics. <laughs> you thought you'd get out of that one, huh? <laughs> but I want to talk to you about that. Since I can't even bring up my notes, I, um, I'll, I'll figure this out in just a second. But, um, oh, now it's going to do it. What does it mean to live a good life? A number of different people had an idea of what a good life was. Let's take a look and see. We, we have a few quotes here about a good life and what they believed a good life was. Now let's take a look at the first one, if we can. They see here, Christopher Morley said this. He said, there are three ingredients in the good life. He, he said actually that what there was is that there was learning and earning and yearning. Hmm. Somebody thought that the good life was actually learning and earning and yearning. But let's take a look at someone else. Someone else had the idea. Norman Thomas actually had the idea that the secret of a good life is to have the right loyalties and hold them in the right scale of values. Now, I thought that that was pretty good. I mean, but does that really constitute a good life? A fellow that I really like more and more all the time there is a fellow whose name was Adam Carolla, and here's what Adam had to say. How many of you know who Adam Carolla is? You know who Adam Carolla is? Now, how, how far back do you remember Adam Carolla is really the question. Adam Carolla used to do a show that was called, what was it called? The Man Show. It was called The Man Show, and Adam was kind of a smart guy. Adam was a, a really, really... Interesting guy, but since that time, a number of true things or real things came out about Adam. He was the one who came up with the entire discourse about how that people, if they were ever going to become anything in life, they needed to go to work. Just go to work, man. Quit crying. Quit belly aching. Quit complaining about life. Get out there and do something with your life. Become something. It'll happen. All you need to do is just do something about it. Here's what he said. He said, if you want to have a good life, you should focus on your family. Can you imagine Adam Carolla said this? He said, focus on your family, on your business, and on your dog. He said, have fun. He said, you'll have a good life. But you see, there's even something that goes more than that because God desires each one of us 
to have a good life. In John chapter 10, verse number 10, speaking of Jesus, Jesus said these words. He said that the thief comes but for to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, but I am come that you would have life super abundant in quantity and superior in quality. He said, I'm really... I'm really here for this. I want you to have this good life. I want you to enjoy this life. John said it like this. He said in John, 3 John verse number 2, he said this, Beloved, he said, I wish above all things, or I pray, it is my prayer, that above everything that you would prosper. Everyone say prosper. prosper. Now when it talks about prosperity, friends, I don't want to make a mistake. But I think that what happens is, is that people use the, we'll just call it the, um, the herd mentality in order to destroy a truth. People say, well, you know, I'm telling you what, those prosperity preachers, what does that mean? Okay, let me really, I want to get rid of prosperity. That's what I want to do. I don't ever want anybody, and over the years you get labeled like that, but I don't ever want anybody to think of me as a prosperity preacher, so let me give you my statement as a preacher. God wants you poor. Okay, does that encourage you? How's that really, how's that help you pay your bills? Does that help you pay your bills? God doesn't want you to have nothing. He wants you to be, he wants you to have less. He wants you to actually be like tomorrow, like when you wake up tomorrow, you're going to have less. But you know what? Praise God because in 45 years when you die, you're going to be able to go to heaven, but you're going to live in hell until then. See, that doesn't make a lot of sense. See, you, would you think, is that what you want for your kids? I mean, even when your children are rebellious, Think about it. Isn't it true? Even when you want... Even, <laughs> don't be a fool, Jewel. Let's tell the truth. Even when you get, want to give them another crack. I already got one. You want to give them another one. You don't care if there's an earthquake right there. Even when that there is, that they are so rebellious, do you know what it is? Is that you are fighting with yourself not to bless them. Because it's your nature. You just want to give to them. You say, yeah, but I really don't like them right now. It doesn't matter. I still want to give to them. Because... My giving isn't really dependent upon them. It's dependent upon me. So you have to search your life over for those people that are actually worthy for the seed that you're about to sow. So listen, if you're a kid, figure out a place where you can be postured for the greatest blessings of all. So John said this. He said, I want you, I want you to know that I wish above everything that you would prosper. Spirit, soul, and body, everything about you. I want you to be healed in your body. I want you to be healed in your soul. I don't want you living with low self-esteem. I don't want you living. I don't want you living with shame and guilt and pain. I don't want you living with any of that stuff. I want you to prosper in every part of your life. He said, now it'll happen even as your soul prospers. If your soul prospers, all of the rest of that stuff is really going to come into play. The question is, is whether or not the people have tasted God's goodness. In Psalm chapter 34, verse number 8, this, the psalmist David at this particular point, he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He said, blessed is the man. He said, now, if you want to know what it is about the good life, he said that the good life really begins to have its definition where he says, blessed is the man that trusts in him. People a lot of times believe that the good life is two chickens in every pot, making sure that my wife's got a Yugo to drive. 
How many of you remember Yugos? You remember? <laughs> Those were actually cars that you just like, whenever they quit, you just kind of left them on the side of the road. <laughs> you just kind of said, forget it. I just leave them on the side of the road. I'm not even going to mess with that. That's really what it is. But see, I want, I want to just make sure that, you know, my wife has money and my kids have money. They have the idea that a good life really has to do with material rather than a good life actually beginning by trusting in God. If I were to ask the question, how many of us have really, truly fully trusted the Lord, that would be a question mark for all of us. Because every time I think that I've trusted God, that there's something that I haven't trusted Him about. Isn't that really true that when you finally get to a place to where you think, okay, I've got this trust thing down. You just now trusted the wrong thing because you thought you had the trust thing down. He'll just show you something else that you didn't trust Him about. He said, blessed is the man that trusts in Him. Look over in the book of Psalms, Psalm 102 for me, please. And Psalm, uh, I'm sorry, 107. Psalm 107, let's take a look at verse number one in the NLT. He said, give thanks to the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. For you are good. For your faithful love for me endures forever. Say, thank you, Lord. For you are good. Your faithful love for me, it lasts forever. Look at verse number two. He said, has the Lord redeemed you? Has he? He said, has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Tell everyone that he saved you from your enemies. Tell people. You see, there's great deliverance that comes to the person that will not attempt to cover what he has been redeemed from. You tell people, God redeemed me. I used to be a horrible liar. God redeemed me. I might be lying to you right now, but he still redeemed me. It's like the guy that goes up to the fellow and says to him, he goes, you foul spirit, what's your name? He said, liar. He said, you telling me the truth? <laughs> because how can a lying spirit tell the truth? I don't know. <laughs> Look at verse number two. It says, has the Lord redeemed you? Say, the Lord has redeemed me. I will speak it out. I will speak it out. I will speak it out. You need to tell others. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Now I want you to take 60 seconds. I want you to tell people what God redeemed you from. Tell them. Go on, tell them. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Speak it out, speak it out, speak it out. Speak it out, speak it out, speak it out. Hey! Speak it out. Hey! Get delivered. Hey! God delivered you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Speak it out, speak it out. Speak it out, speak it out. Speak it out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Speak it out, speak it out. Speak it out, speak it out. Hey, speak it out, speak it out. Glory to God. 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 Hey, thank you, Jesus. Okay, sit down. Speak it out. The Lord's redeemed you. Speak it out. The Lord's redeemed you, start telling people. The Lord's redeemed you, tell everybody. God's redeemed me. God has redeemed me. It'll keep you from becoming a professional, unbelieving Christian. It'll keep you 
speaking out what God delivered you from will keep you from pride. It'll keep you from arrogance. Start thinking that it was your power and the might of your hand that hath done this great things. No, he said, but you shall remember that it is only the Lord your God for it is he that gives you the power to get it. He gave you the power. He delivered you. Say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for redeeming me from the hand of my enemies. It is because of you, not because of me. I will speak it out. I will tell the world, you have redeemed me. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, glory to God. James chapter 1, verse number 17, James said this. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above. Everything good. Everything good. I just need to make sure that there's not anything that is blocking the line. Say any blockage. Any, blockage. any hindrance. Any hindrance. In, my life. in my life. I break it now. Break it now. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. You need to make sure that you need to get under the spout where the glory comes out. You need to get under that spout. Hallelujah. You need to get under there and take a shower. Some of you have been stinking hanging around in the world like you have. Isn't it true you kind of get around people sometimes and you kind of go. <laughs> You've been around that Limburger Christian again, have you? Sometimes you get around certain Christians and you get around people that have that Funyun breath. <laughs> they got Funyun breath. But all that they think Christianity is just fun. And you get around them and you go, Jesus, are you in there? You, where are you? Jesus, where? Jesus, Hello. And you look for Jesus and you think he's there. He's not there. You think, where did he go? You have that Funyun Christian breath. I just want to have fun. You know, oh, or they, you hang around, you start hanging around that you don't have to Christian. We know you don't have to. In order to be a Christian, you don't have to. No, you don't, no, you never have, you, no, to be, no, I, I'm a Christian and I don't. Uh, did you ever wonder, it, it, hasn't it bothered you yet that Christianity keeps talking about becoming bigger and the character is getting smaller? Hasn't that gotten to you yet? Haven't you started figuring out that when people tell you that they're Christians, they just might not be? If you were the devil, oh, by the way, is the devil here? Just answer yes. But like if you're one of, if you're like Lucifer, would you stand up please? I But sometimes, sometimes what happens is, is that now Christianity is really being defined by what you don't have to do rather than being defined by a man's honor of God. People have become way more and this is the reason why that many of us are having difficulties. People have become way more interested in church than they are in God. Because you cannot use media to be able to get into a person 
to get a person into a relationship with God. There is no substitute. There is no substitute of personal sacrifice to come into a relationship with the Lord. There is no substitute for telling yourself no. There's no substitute. God cannot bless the man who wants it all. God finds no place for himself with that person. He comes to the man who recognizes his own weakness, his own lack, his own need. He comes to the man who says, it is in him that I am righteous. It is not in me. My upbringing, it's not in my school. It's not in my church. It is in him. Remove him and all you see is my nakedness. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, can you give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1. It says, for if we, if we, can you give me that please? For we know, can you give me that up here please? It says, for we know if our earthly tent is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, verse 2. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Verse 3, if indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. That friends, remember this, that if anyone took Jesus out of your life, you would be naked. It is at that place that your life begins to become. It is at that place where God begins to touch you. It's at this place where you recognize that it is only in bowing your knee that you become taller in God. You see, the good life isn't the life that men define. The good life is the one that he has defined. That although the world will call me and the world will tell me what it means to be a success and the world tries to train me and get me all trumped up about what that means, but yet I begin to hear a voice. In John chapter 10, verse number 27, Jesus said, He said, my sheep, hear me. And I know them. And they follow me. Can you imagine how many people you know that you can say, follow God? Jesus said, my sheep, Hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. Turn with me, please, over to Psalm. One twelve, and I'll close. Psalm one twelve. If you would give me that on the screen, please. Psalm 112. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, will have the good life. I will have the good life. 
Because I will follow you. In every way. Remember the good life, friends, the good life has two sides to it. The good life just does not have God's side to it. The good life also has my response to him. The good life is created. It's created by God for you. Entering it, we, we enter. Hmm, remember Romans 5.2. Through whom also we also have access by what? Faith. Into what? F by what? Faith. Into what? Grace. Say it again. By what? Faith. Into what? Grace. So remember this. Grace is offered to us. It's faith that enters grace. Grace doesn't mean that God doesn't care. Grace doesn't mean that God has no opinion. Grace is that Jesus has done everything which is correct. He has done everything, but now anything will only be experienced by what? Faith. In Psalm 112, he said, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments too. His descendants... This is speaking of you. Your descendants will be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. Say thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That wealth. Now remember wealth and riches are two different things. Wealth doesn't have to do with money. Riches has to do with money. You are wealthy long before you ever get any money. So he said, wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness will endure forever for. Unto the upright there arises a light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. He said, a good man deals graciously and lends. He guides his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. You will never be afraid. Say, I will never be afraid. Amen. Say it again. I will never be afraid. Say it again. 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 He said, I will never be afraid, or this man will never be afraid of receiving bad news for his heart is fixed trusting in the Lord say I will never be afraid of receiving bad news because my heart is established trusting in God I will have a good life because God promises it to me and I will never, 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 never be afraid of receiving bad news because my heart, my heart, me, I am fixed, trusting, I trust God, not me. You trust God. You don't trust you. You trust God. You trust God. You don't trust yourself. You trust God. You never be afraid of bad news. If you've been afraid of bad news, receiving bad news, or what's going to happen, if you've thought, what's going to happen next, please stand. No bad news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things that I want to pray for you for is this. I want to pray, to pray for you that you will understand that concern 
for your life only needs to go to the things that matter, not to the things that do not. Many times people major on minors. Like, why is that bothering you? Wait, don't let that bother you. There are other things that should bother you. Don't let that bother you. This will come to pass. This will come to pass. It will pass. Our world. Our world. The world of the believer is being shaken. It has gone through a number of years of acceptance. But hell has been deceptive and smart enough to begin to turn the church against the church. And to be able to keep favor from the believing ones. You know, it used to bother me. It used to bother me. I would say, God, why is it that I'm not seeing the favor that I want to see? Because I thought things were just supposed to happen for you. You know, somehow somebody would recognize you and they'd want you to be on the team. And believe me when I tell you, they do recognize you. They recognize that if you are able to open your mouth, that you will stand for something that they want no part of. They want no part of. And then he puts the bit of Christian character in your mouth. And you can't act like them. You have to act like him. And so you feel unclothed in so many areas of life that there's nothing that you can do to protect yourself because you're withheld from using the same tactics that hell uses upon us. But from now on, I want you to release the feelings. Your future will be based upon your ability to be able to roll your cares on God and keep them rolled on God. Don't give them up. Don't ever pick them up again. Realize this is one thing that I am assigning to God and I am not going to touch it. Don't become irresponsible. But it takes great responsibility to realize where it lies. Where the responsibility lies. You need to keep it there. You can love it. You can bless it. You can do whatever. But even, even though all of those things are true, you need to keep your cares rolled on God. The future of other people is dependent upon your ability to keep your cares rolled on God. Don't you pick them up again. Ever. Do you know when the Bible says that a, that a, a thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand? How many of you have kind of seen a little of that? You're thinking, what in the hell is going on here? He said, hell. Yeah, I don't want to go there either. <laughs> two places, two things. I said it and I don't want to go there. Because it is hell that's going on in people's lives. The worst part is that there's no one to become a safety net for their falling.
evil is becoming very brazen. That's why trusting God, keeping your cares rolled on Him, you act like your Father. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 26. He said, let not your eyes look to the right hand or to the left and keep your foot, verse 27, from evil. You keep your foot. Don't you act like them. You don't, you don't act like them well. You don't act like them well. So raise your hands and say this after me. In the name of Jesus, Father, you are well aware of the things that have bothered me. The things that evil has been able to use upon me. And in the name of Jesus, I give you those things. Your word tells me that I'm not to have a care because you care for me. You care for this situation as well. More than I do. Forgive me for being afraid of what may happen to me. Forgive me for not believing that when you care for the sparrow, that I am not of much greater value to you than them. I roll my cares upon you. I give you everything. I trust you with my life and with my death. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. grateful. Now roll it on him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Even over the internet, give God your cares. Give them to him and don't let them go. Don't let him go. Whenever those things try to come back to you, you tell them, I gave you to him I gave you to him I gave you to my I gave all of you cares to my father all of the cares to my father all the cares to my father they belong to him they don't belong to me I will enjoy him I will enjoy life I will enjoy following him I will enjoy Worshipping him and honoring him and giving him my time, giving him my life and giving him my love. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. You may be seated. Thank you very much.